All right, and we are live. Welcome, everyone, to Formula Drift Japan. Round four here at Okuibuki. Today is the main competition here, the final round of Formula Drift Japan and also the last event of the year. How are you doing, everyone? If you're just joining us right now on the internet, anywhere from all around the world, thank you so much for being with us here today. Good morning. My name is Alexi Smith, and I'm here with Ryan Sage. We are your commentators for the English version of today's live stream. Uh, really looking forward to today's competition. Uh, so had some great qualifying action yesterday. I think, uh, first of all, let's have a look at that. So let's have a look at the uh, video from yesterday's uh, qualifying. If we can bring that up. Let's look at qualifying. Here we go. So qualifying, let's look at the top 10 drivers from yesterday's competition. Yeah, it was uh, pretty solid. We saw a slow start to qualifying. Uh, some of the lower ranked drivers struggling a little bit. As we got mid-pack, we saw guys like Gino Reno really start to lay down some solid, clean, and smooth runs here. You can see the course layout, if you missed it yesterday, is composed of a, a few outer zones and two inside clips. Right, a, a really awesome job right there by Ichinagi. This is on run number one for him. He didn't totally complete it. He had to pull a little bit of angle out of the car. But Alexi, certainly he got a lot more confident, as did other drivers throughout the competition. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at some of the drivers here. Uh, Koichi Yamashita, the angle they're getting on the first corner is amazing, but also the second half of the course, this is where most of the guys have the most trouble. They have uh, a lot of outer zones. You can see their outer zone, outer zone, long outer zone there for Masaki Kasahara. Uh, getting a zero on his first run, but pulling off a great second run, qualifying in seventh place. Yeah, and here we go, moving into our, our sixth place competitor here, Kenji Yamada. Now, I believe this was his run number one. One of the few drivers that went out of the gate very, very strong, almost a backwards uh, entry into the first outer zone. You can see the consistency here, very, very solid. And then Hayashi, another driver that was trying to best uh, his buddy, uh, Masashi Yokoi. He ended up going into the wall early on, and he was having, he was in the top three uh, after run number one, but uh, Yokoi was just too strong, and we'll see his run here shortly. And so uh, Hayashi crashing on his uh, practice. We got Kazuya Izuka not doing very well all season in Formula Drift, finally finding his groove, qualifying in fourth place for yesterday's competition, uh, yesterday's qualifying, doing a really good job here in this big Toyota Chaser. Making a lot of smoke, a lot of angle, just stringing together a very clean run overall. And as we break into our top three here, you'll see a Taguchi laying down a real solid run. You see this big long run up here, uphill. Drivers really need to get that timing right. You can see that smooth rate to angle there. Not one of the quickest rate to angles. Probably that's one of the reasons why it kept him uh, out of the top two spots. But very consistent, great line. You can see smooth moves from the outer zones into this final inside clip. And then a lot of angle down the hill, really maximizing the points on the line finishing up there. So coming into this competition, ranking points number one, Andrew Gray, cut number 100. Just again, putting down a very good run. Uh, Andy, powerful car, also a powerful driver, impressing everybody here, impressing everyone all over the country all season with these consistently good, clean runs. As we can see here, this, uh, this is the sort of run you needed to do to get qualifying in, qualifying in second place for this competition. Well, he was leading the pack after run number one, but then this happened right here. Masashi Okoi, a very well-known driver, and right there, that's the big difference. He got the timing right. This is his second run, the first run. He just didn't have it as perfect as he did on the second run here. You can see he's running that wide line all the way out to that outer zone, and then right there keeping a moderate amount of angle in an area where a lot of drivers were almost getting to straight. He's able to hold it off, and he became your number one qualifier and continues to impress global drifting fans all across the world. Yeah, that run was absolutely amazing. I think it, uh, everybody up here in the judging stand and the commentary stand and all the spectators too were blown away by that run by Masashi Yokoi. It was the best run we've seen here all weekend so far. But we still do have the top 32 competition to go today. And that means tandem driving, tandem battles on this layout here at Okuibuki. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is Okuibuki, where is that? Well, let me uh, explain that for you. You can sort of basically know. see what it looks like here. Now, Okuibuki is in a little place called... Um, uh, a Shiga Prefecture in Japan. Shiga, you've probably never heard of it. It sort of sits between uh, Nagoya and Osaka, up in the mountains. Uh, and this is actually a ski resort, uh, known today as Okuibuki Motor Park. It's normally Okuibuki Ski Resort. And what we've done here is taken a few of the car parks that they have here at the base of the ski resort, literally at the base of the ski resort, and converted it into a drift course, a mountain-style drift course. 
Now, of course, we do have some comments out there going, well, you have Japan, you have so many courses there, why are you using a car park? Well, as we've seen so far from yesterday's qualifying and, and practice and uh, all that, this is a fantastic layout. The entry is amazing. It's a steep uphill entry uh, leading up to, you know, leading into a rock wall. Very street style sort of course, over a bridge which runs over a river and into a what looks simple but caught out a lot of people yesterday, upper section of the course. They have long outer zones, uh, two wall rides, and uh, the drivers are getting very close to a lot of obstacles, which makes this course very challenging. Yeah, certainly this is not your standard four-cornered car park or or parking lot uh, setup. You know, you're basically coming off of a public street over a bridge that has a stream underneath it into a center section here and then back down that bridge uh, all the way down the hill. So you've got an uphill challenge, a downhill challenge, mm. and then of course you've got all the walls and a very, very tight, I would say rather tight uh, entrance into the car park area that also serves as the exit going down the hill. So this is a, not a simple course by any means. It seems to be a course that's going to favor tandem competition and keep the cars together yeah. quite well, which will be very exciting for us and for the fans. Uh, and it can get very, very smoky. So uh, some drivers have really been laying on the throttle, leaving outer zone number two and then down the hill because it basically is pretty much full throttle all the way down. So very exciting runs yesterday in qualifying and uh, looking forward to uh, today's top 32 competition. Yeah, and by no means a simple course. Uh, even though it does lend itself well to tandem driving, uh, even on the solar runs. We did have a couple of double zeros yesterday uh, for drivers who weren't able to complete the course. So not by any, not by any means a simple course to drive, but you can see there the uh, inner clip there uh, leading up to the over the bridge. That is actually a bridge there with a, a, a small stream below it. It's about, it's about a six metre drop uh, down into that. So... Uh, Keeping it, uh, keeping it street here at Formula Drift Japan up at uh, Okuibuki. I'd just like to explain what that actually means. Uh, the town near here is called Ibuki. That is the name of the town. Uh, and Oku means like outer. So we're in the outer ed outer reaches of Ibuki town. So outer? Outer, okay. yes. So like uh, outer something or other. You have names like that. Places like outer, whatever. So uh, we're on the far reaches uh, of uh, Ibuki town up in the mountains here. Uh, it's made for some lovely shots. I think the, this is probably the best looking course we've had so far as far as the uh, live stream is concerned. You can see uh, pretty much the, the entire layout of, well, everything from where we are in the judging stand here. You have the uh, course right in front of us. We can see the start line. We can see the, uh, the lead up. We can see the whole course. We can also see the entire pits and the entire display area as well from up here. So like it was made for this sort of thing, this particular course. Really enjoying it so far. And uh, also looking forward to uh, the, the uh, battles which are going to come up very shortly. Okay, so we're just going to go to a short commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back very shortly. All right, welcome back to Formula Drift Japan. Round four. Final round here at Okuibuki Motor Park. We're about to begin the top 32 battles. That's what we came here to see. Battles. About to begin very shortly. We have a full top 32. We're going to go through the uh, top 32 uh, starting very shortly. We have our cars down there on the start line lined up. If you're just joining us now, my name is Alexi Smith. I'm here with Ryan Sage. We are your commentators for today's competition. We have a full day of drifting laid out ahead of us. A full top 32 battle tree. It's looking good. If you were just with us before, we could see the uh, the level of driving which we saw yesterday in qualifying. We're hoping to see the same sort of thing today, except uh, with two cars side by side. So this is the first run of the top 32. It is a buy run for Masashi Yokoi. Yesterday's first place qualifier. He's just uh, looks like he's going to take it easy and complete his run. Well, I was hearing over the radio that uh, Yokoi was actually having some vehicle issues. Now, it's really interesting because he does have a buy run here, and uh, Formula Drift rules state that basically you have to show that your car is operational uh, if you're going to make a buy run. And we were hearing that, I mean, you can see that he's got the, the front bumper off. Uh, it would have been very, very unfortunate had he not been able to make it to the line. So hopefully now he'll have quite a bit of time between top 32 and the top 16 to get his car in order. Uh, in hopes that he can uh, continue his great run here this weekend. Well, it's good to see he was able to complete that run. Uh, Yokoi has had quite a few troubles this year so far. I believe uh, broken drive shaft at one round, also uh, a uh, clutch issue in the finals as well. 
in another round. So here comes our first battle of today's competition. Masuda versus Taniguchi. Of course, we have a lot of fans of Masuda out there. The Shark JZX90 versus Taniguchi in the Zombie JZX100. Two big crashes this season. He's decided to uh, keep the car going. He's repaired it as best he can, and now he's uh, bringing it out in today's competition. Okay, here we go. First battle of the top 32 from the Drift Japan. Oh, hang on. We have a restart. Restart. We have the flag out there as well. Now, of course, today we're going to do our best to explain everything uh, so that everyone knows what is going on. You can just see there in the background there a red flag being waved. Now, there we go. The red flag. Uh, there's a few reasons why that can be waved uh, from uh, start line issues, Ryan. Yeah, it can be... The lead car jumping the start line, it can be the lead car hitting a, a chicane cone. Those are usually the, the two most common. Sometimes you'll uh, you'll get a, a lead car um, not leaving the start line. So those are basically the three most common that we see and uh, usually is contained within one of those three there. So it will be a strike for Masuda. And uh, if it's two strikes, moving to three strikes would be a zero for the run. So we've seen it one time really? in the history of the sport, this uh, year actually, okay. which was uh, pretty amazing. But yeah. um, here we go. Well, here we go. So no issues on this start here. Masuda, wait, oh no, we, have another, we have another red <laughs> flag. Now, I think we'd like to point out at this point uh, that there might be two issues that uh, are leading up to this. Masuda's car, his JZX90, is about twice as wide as your regular JZX90. Uh, his wheels, are stick they seem to be sticking out of his guards further every single time. You can see there the width of that car. Uh, and the other issue can, could possibly be that the start line chicane is a bit narrower than it usually is. Yeah, yeah, and I was hearing that was a cone hit, so that's uh, right. two cone hits for Masuda. Okay, so he's going to have to be really, really careful here in order to uh, not hit the cones. So yeah, it, the cones are laid out a bit narrower than they usually are, just uh, as a result of the, the layout of the track here. So hopefully we can get through. It would be uh, not a good thing for Masuda to get knocked out straight away. Don't strike yourself out, dog. Don't play yourself. Oh, oh, he did actually, he he did actually not, he hit one, but it didn't fall over. Okay, here we go. So clean start. Masuda leading, Taniguchi following. Masuda, nice wide line. Really good lead run here for Masuda so far, Taniguchi. Taniguchi understeering, understeering on the outer zone. Masuda pulling away, clean run for Masuda, but a big understeer there for Taniguchi in the following run. On this part of the course, we have seen a lot of people understeer in that part of the course. It's really weird. I don't know why it happens right there. It seems to be the, the, the point where people sort of get off and on the accelerator and people tend to spin out. Let's watch this replay. So after a little drama there, Masuda will have a pretty decent advantage on run number one. You can see he gets a, a, a much cleaner start this time around. Nice initiation here. Now, Tanaguchi, the biggest point of this run is going to be right here as he transitions. A lot of angle in the car, and then right there, a big understeer, and he goes off course, actually. So Masuda will have a big advantage after run number one, essentially a zero for Tanaguchi, and he'll have a lot of ground to make up here in hopes of trying to claim a spot in the top 16. That's a bit of a shame there for uh, Tanaguchi. So let's watch this replay one more time. So you can see there, outer zone on the entry, and an in clip just there. And then this outer zone here. This outer zone has caused a lot of trouble for a lot of people. You can see there, Tanaguchi understeering, taking out the outer, the outer clip, uh, the end of the outer clip uh, zone pylon there. Do we call it a pylon or a cone, or what do we call it? We go cone. Cone, okay, we'll say, we'll say cone from now on. Taking it out, and uh, big understeer. That's going to be a zero for him there, of course, because he did go off course. So not a great start for Taniguchi in the red car on the left there. Masuda there on the right this time. Masuda shouldn't. He, Masuda has a, a straight line start this time. He doesn't have to dodge the uh, cones in the chicane, so probably no more issues for him. Hopefully for uh, hitting cones. Okay, here we go with the start this time. Taniguchi, the red chaser leading Masuda, the grey shark. JZX90 following. Okay, a good entry from both these guys so far. Masuda, nice and wide, nice and wide though, but keeping up with Taniguchi. Taniguchi, okay. Very, Slightly timid run lead here from Taniguchi. Masuda getting up right behind him, losing a bit of angle there. Masuda, but still keeping up with Taniguchi. Masuda falling behind slightly there too. 
Not a very consistent run there for Masada. The lead run there for Taniguchi was quite consistent, but uh, maybe not as aggressive as we'd like to see, but uh, Masada keeping up with him the entire way around. Well, if you're, if you're scoring at home, you obviously know that we would be looking for uh, Masuda to make a very, very big mistake, equal to the one that Taniguchi did. We don't really see that here, even though he had a very, very late initiation. Kind of gave a little bit of ground to Taniguchi uh, through the center section here. Taniguchi not hitting that inside clip, but again, we're really looking for Masuda to make a big mistake here, enough to force it one more time, and I don't think that that's going to happen. He did enough here to get the job done, and he should be moving on into the top 16. I'd say so too. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a super duper clean run for the Shark. Uh, you can see there, Luz hitting the, uh, tapping the wall slightly, which is all it takes really to uh, knock the bodywork off this car. Keeping up with uh, Tanuchi, so we have one judge for Masuda, second for Masuda, and three for Masuda. So, Toshimitsu Masuda in the Shark JZX90 will be moving on to the top 16. So that was our first battle of the weekend for Formula Drift Japan, round four here at Okuibuki. We're only in the first battle of the top 32, and it's already looking uh, really good. I can't wait to see what's going to happen when we get to the pointy end of this competition. So unfortunately for Taniguchi getting knocked out, and I get the feeling that that is probably the last run that shell will ever do. Uh, it looks clean on the outside, but if you sort of look under the uh, look under the fenders at the metalwork underneath, it, uh, it looks like a crumpled up beer can. So I'm not sure how if he'll be keeping that for next season or not. Okay, so we're moving on to our third battle, or our third uh, third run in the bracket. Of course, Yokoi, by run. And the run we just saw there, Taniguchi. Uh, we have uh, Yamashita versus Takano. Now, Yamashita, extremely experienced driver. Uh, been around in drifting since day one. He's one of the OGs, probably the most OG driver we have out here. Uh, known for back in the day for driving A86s. And in the background we have uh, Takano. This is his first time ever entering a D uh, Formula, sorry, Formula Drift competition. He used to do, uh, he's done all the other competition series in Japan. He thought he'd give uh, Formula Drift a try to see, you know, how it felt to see if uh, the feeling was a little bit different, uh, just uh, as an experience. Obviously, he has no chance of uh, winning any sort of championship coming in on the final round, but he said he's just here to give it a try and have some fun. So here we go. Koichi Yamashita versus Takano. This time Yamashita leading in the work well sponsored JZX100. It's a good lead run from there. Slightly shallow in the following round from, from Takano. This is a good lead run here so far from Yamashita. Takano just needs to keep his drift going. Tuck it up a bit closer. Sort of lacking in angle there, Takano. Good lead run there from, Yama from Yamashita. Very smoky. Very aggressive looking run. That was a good lead run there for, for Yamashita. Of course, the lead drivers have been told you want to be able to, you want to do like a, a 100 point lead run when you're leading in your competition. So a good start here for Yamashita. As we take a look at the replay here, you can see he gets a little bit of a gap. Great angle and he goes very deep into that zone. And then right here, you can see Takano a little bit shallow on the inside. Yamashita's going to transition to the second outer zone. He's going to get hung up just a little bit right there, but get back on it, try to push to this outer zone. Takano adjusts, but it's a good start right here for Yamashita as he pulls a little bit of gap down the hill, and you can see Takano needing to take that tighter line in order to gain back some of the room lost there. So Yamashita will now go to the chase position, Takano to the lead, and we'll have another battle underway. Just noticed after that run, that very smoky run, there's uh, some uh, fragments of tire rubber that flew all the way up here onto our table after that run from Yamashita. So uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of smoky action from him, from him. Okay, here we go. Second run there this time. Takano leading. Yamashita following. Of course, Takano. Good entry there from him. Takano himself also a very experienced drifter. Been drifting for a very long time. Looking really good so so far from both these guys. Takano. Great lead run here from Takano. Yamashita sort of he hesitating, it's like, oh, big understeer there, understeer from Takano, unfortunately. Uh, that's, uh, again, another part of the course we keep seeing people having trouble with uh, as they head back down the hill over the bridge. 
big understeer there from lead car Takano on the S14 Silvia. Well, I was getting the, the, the intuition that we were possibly going to see a one more time here because I thought Takano did enough to get some back. You'll see Yamashita struggles on the second part of the course here. He loses some ground to Takano, and then Takano is able to push forward, fill that outer zone. But as we come down the hill here, right before the finish line, he's going to have a big straightening right there, and Yamashita almost has to stop to avoid contact. So I think that that might put the needle uh, back in Yamashita's court, but we'll see what the judges say here as we've digested both runs now and go to the scorecards. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. It's, uh, that was It was a really obvious understeer there from Takano. So we have one, two, three judges in favor of Yamashita. So that's a shame for Takano. It, was, it looked like it was going to be one more time, but the winner of that battle is Koichi Yamashita in the World Work Racing JZX100 Mark II. Ah, so... So this is the, those are the two parts of the course. We've, or, we've already seen two mistakes on the two parts of the course that we've normally seen mistakes so far in our qualifying and also in practice. As they come down the hill over the bridge, down the hill, they the, the, the guys who are doing this course a bit better than everyone else seem to really throw their cars into there, which is uh, understandably a scary thing because it does really drop off quite steeply after that bridge. And of course there is a... Uh, a rock wall directly uh, in the direction in which you are trying to throw your car. And there is an inner clip point there too, which you're supposed to be able to hit. So a combination of many things on this course, uh, challenging our drivers here this weekend. Okay, so our next competition now, Ichianagi versus Hisano. Ichianagi, yellow car, Hisano following S in the S15. Nice, wide run there. Whoa, bit Whoa. too wide there for Ichianagi. Bit too wide, understeering. But still continuing his run, Hisano. Not really too worried about that, keeping up with, with Ichianagi quite well. Here they go down the hill. Ichianagi, looking quite good. A little bit of a hesitation there from Hisano, but uh, ooh, mistakes from both drivers, but uh, on the entry, a fairly big one from Ichianagi, heading out all the way to the edge of the track towards the rock wall. Got a little bit exciting there, almost had uh, some contact into the wall. You can see right here, Isano keeps Ichinagi very close, and then separation here as Ichinagi accelerates, and he goes real deep, nearly hitting that rock wall. You can see right there, Isano tucks up on the inside, then he kind of straightens out as he transitions to inside clip number one. Now both drivers trying to get their grounding here as Ichinagi heads toward that outer zone. Isano trying to chase him down. A little bit, little bit more mistakes coming down the hill into inside clip one, but really that first half of the battle, both drivers making some pretty sizable mistakes there. And so now the judges will have one run in the books. They'll switch it up. Ichinagi will go to the chase position, and Isano will take the lead. Yeah, Hisano this time leading. Uh, of course, we saw Ichinagi in the yellow one via running really wide, but uh, Hisano sort of using that to his advantage, catching up to Ichinagi, but uh, we saw there understeering slightly as they went over the bridge, so probably fairly even so far for these two guys. Okay, this time Hisano, S15 leading. A little bit slower on his entry this time. Then Ichinago, good angle again, really wide line, taking out the uh, marker cones. Ichinagi trying to get in really tight on, oh, and losing his drift. Ichinagi in that same position, that same part of the course, losing his drift behind Hisano. Now, Hisano, the lead car, he did get quite slow, but uh, not unusually so compared to some of the other ones we've seen here so far. Let's look at this replay again and see, try and see what happened. So, Isano in the lead position here, Ichinagi in the chase. You can see right there, a little bit of an unorthodox initiation. Driver in the lead has the right of way. You can see Ichinagi tucks up on the inside right here. Isano, little tap of that inside clip, and then right here on the inside, Ichinagi gets a little bit out of whack. He takes that tight line. He's not able to pull it off. Isano was also coming off that outer zone a bit earlier there so judges will have to take both of those things into account you can see here big separation as both drivers cross the finish line and head back down to find out who is going to win here in the top 32. Yeah we could see that, that uh, just here you can see the, watch the following car in the same position that Hisano made a mistake and understood right there uh, Ichinagi did not do that but uh, just here we can see he right there loses the drift maybe uh, missing his uh, shift down to try and uh, get the power down so a uh, fairly big mistake from both of these guys, uh, but that that big understeer there by Ichinagi. I mean, it was almost uh, he almost stopped drifting. I mean, Hisano did uh, understeer, but it wasn't quite as big. 
Yeah, I sort of thought this might happen one more time. One in favour of Hisano in the S15. Two in favour of Hisano in the S15 Silvia, the silver colour we just saw there. So, Ichiyanagi in the yellow 1v up. Unfortunately for him, that was a very big and uh, very obvious mistake there where he understeered and lost all his drift and almost came to a stop. So, unfortunately for him, uh, it could have been a one more time if it wasn't as bad as that, but... Uh, Ichinagi in the yellow 1VR getting knocked out. Taichi Hisano moving on to the top 16. Uh, and, uh, it, it, if his understeer wasn't quite as big, it could have gone to a one more time, I think. But uh, it was just a bit too, a bit too obvious and a bit too of a, dare I say, embarrassing a mistake. But uh, it wasn't a position on the course where we have seen a lot of mistakes. That outer zone there, the end of the outer zone where people sort of have to fiddle around with uh, transitioning from power to on power to off power. Okay, so we have our next run here. Kazuya Izuka. This is a buy run for him. All he has to do is complete this run, which he looks like he's going to do with ease. Filling that outer zone. Actually, if this was a qualifying run, it wouldn't be too bad so far. So Izuka sort of keeping it uh, three-quarter throttle, completing his run, looking very comfortable uh, in this car and with this with this layout as well. So that's uh, his run. Obviously Izuka will move on to the top 16. I believe he's been in the top 16 before, but uh, he's looking really good this weekend. I've got the feeling that uh, he might get uh, fairly far. It seems that this course suits him and his driving style quite well. Okay, we're about to move on to our next battle now. Kei Takanohashi. Takanohashi in the S15 Sylvie was there on the left. Followed by Yoshinori Shinozaki. Actually, Shinozaki was in um, Australia last weekend for a drift competition held on a sort of very similar layout to this. It was a sort of a street uh, a requisition street course uh, so, the sort of guy who likes this sort of course. Okay, here we go, lead run. Takonohashi versus Shinozaki. Okay, good entry from both these guys. Good angle from lead car, Takonohashi. Okay, this is looking good so far. Shinozaki tucking in. Okay, can he keep the drift going? Yes, no problem so far. He's, he's right up against. Oh boy. Whoa, and. Whoa, ho, ho. Right up against his door. And, oh, spinning out there from Shinozaki. Oh, wow. He was doing so well up until that point. <laughs> Keeping right up against Takonohashi's door. Showing that uh, he had the speed to keep up. Showing the skill that he had. Uh, he was able to tandem even at the, that kind of speed. But, uh, yeah, that, see, again, that exact spot. That exact spot where it kind of drops down a little bit. Spinning out. Well, a a what, moderate uh, replay here, or uh, initiation into this first outer zone for Takanohashi. Shinozaki on the inside here. Now he's going to get aggressive as we leave the second outer zone, or begin the second outer zone, rather. Up on the inside here, you can see a wide line from Takanohashi. Shinozaki actually gets in front of the front two wheels of Takanohashi, and then right there, because of the aggressiveness, is not able to make that turn too tight for him, spins out. And it looks like that will be at a disadvantage for him going into run number two. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a shame that would have uh, that would have been the most dominant uh, tandem run we would have seen so far if he was able to pull that off. But, uh, Shinozaki going into this run with a big disadvantage. It wasn't quite uh, well. It was a spin, really, wasn't it? It's a shame for him. But uh, taking nothing away from Takanohashi, doing uh, well all weekend. Maybe a little bit slower than some of the other drivers, but uh, so let's watch this uh, next battle this time. Shinozaki leading. Nothing to lose, everything to gain here for lead car. Shinozaki has to put down the best lead run he possibly can. But Takanohashi doing a great job of following Shinozaki here. Tucking in on the top half of the course again. Tucking in on the bottom half of the course. I mean, that wasn't even a conservative run there for Takanohashi. That was a full noise run behind uh, Shinozaki there. Yeah, great job by Takanohashi. You can see he does give him a little bit of space on initiation here, but then as soon as they get into this first outer zone, he starts closing the door right away. He's not playing with any chances here or taking any chances, rather. He stays up on the inside, very, very tight here. Good proximity, now moving down the hill, still keeping the pressure on. Takanohashi seemingly at an advantage after that spin on run number one from Shinozaki. 
and it should be a berth into the top 16 for Takanohashi. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a bit of a shame there for Shinozaki. He was doing, he's been doing really well all weekend so far, but uh, let's see. So here we go. Kei Takanohashi in the white S15 Sylvia. One, two, three judges in favor of him. So Kei Takanohashi moving on to the top 16. I'll just write his name here in our little bracket. So an extra over now. Hayashi. Now, Hayashi, one of uh, two guys yesterday to put his car into that rock wall. Uh, I believe he did it on like, it was the second practice run of the day yesterday. Like literally the second run, not his second run, it was the second run of the morning. Uh, under, uh, oversteered into the wall, left a big uh, mark there on the rock wall. Like it's literally a rock wall covered in, uh, in bushes. So, so very street style here, but uh, uh, sorry, uh, Hayashi looking to beat uh, Yokoi this weekend is his main aim, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is his by run. Hayashi, nice early run there. Big angle, nice angle from him there. Keeping his speed up, flip. So out of zone, out of zone. Nice, nicely done that out of zone there. Gets the outer clip there, watch him. Big angle here. Now see, that seems to be the trick there for these drivers. They have to throw their car in with big angle over the bridge to keep the momentum going as they go down the hill. We've seen other guys so far this morning understeer. Uh, their car is like right on the balance of drifting and then going over that bridge just seems to upset it and they understeer. Whereas uh, guys like this, uh, like Hayashi, seem to understand the fact they have to throw their car in there really hard and use the momentum to throw them down the hill and keep their speed up uh, and keep them drifting as well. It also makes them some uh, very exciting looking runs. Speaking of exciting looking, uh, the spectators here today have a really great view. Uh, of pretty much everybody here, just having a bit of a look around, the majority of the spectators are no more than about seven or eight meters away from the action, wherever they are on the track. So a great venue for, uh, for spectators as well here. And that's uh, nothing to say of the uh, lovely mountains that we have uh, surrounding this venue. Of course, it is a ski resort, so uh, nice big steep mountains covered in lovely trees. Of course, this time of the year, it's uh, it's not hay fever season, which I'm very thankful for. Otherwise, uh, I'd be I'd probably be sounding even more nasal than usual. So lovely weather here today. It's slightly cool. Wish you were here with us, wherever you're watching us from all around the world here on the live stream. Okay, next battle now, Mekua Nakamura. This is Mekua S15 yellow car, followed by Nakamura blue car. Right out to the edge of the wall, Mekua kissing the wall, putting his car all the way to the edge of the outer zone. Now watch them as they come down the hill. Whoa, Nakamura! Whoa, Nakamura! Following car there, Nakamura getting a little bit sketchy. Let's watch this replay. Well, a really good run for both drivers, really, starting off in run number one. Mecca on the lead. Nice aggressive flick there. Nakamura immediately following and chasing it down, staying on his line. Trying to close the door here. Great job by Mecca scraping his rear bumper. Nakamura on the inside. Now, Nakamura, as we leave outer zone, Three is going to really push hard right here on Whoa. the inside, nearly making contact. So good job by both drivers. Some high points and definitely impressive car control here. Now they'll switch it back up. Mecca will go to the chase. Nakamura to the lead position. And we'll see if we can get a run, a winner out of, out of here out of two runs. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I've been wanting to see at this course uh, there, that uh, aggressive driving there by Mecca, sort of uh, toge style, kissing the wall, kissing the concrete, uh, barrier there and throwing his car as deep as he could up against Nakamura's uh, door. So you can see that that's the uh, start line area. Of course, uh, even though this is a course, which it's not a racetrack, but uh, we have everything here that we normally have at a Formula Drift event. We have the uh, burn a nice, big, extremely big burnout box uh, that all the drivers can warm up their cars with down the uh, bottom there. Okay, here we go. Second battle between Nakamura and Mekua this time. Whoa. 
Nekawa following Nakamura, leading Nakamura. The more aggressive of the two so far. Let's see how, how he drives this top half of the course. Okay, slightly off course there. But still, again, fairly similar to the first run. Mekua maybe not quite as close as uh, Nakamura was on his uh, on his run. However, we did see a bit of uh, wheels being dropped off the edge of the course there. Let's watch this replay. Well, we, we are looking at comparing both leads and both chases. So if you're at home, who had the better lead run between the two? Who had the better chase run? Can you find a winner here? Nakamura will take the lead here against Mekua. A little bit of a mid line here. Mekua adjusts, stays with him on that line. You can see off the wall is Nakamura there. And Mekua trying to close the door here. A little bit of straightening by Nakamura coming down the hill. Now Nakamura does have a little bit of a di of distance here. You yeah. remember that uh, Mekua, uh, or rather Nakamura, did close the door there towards the end. So good back and forth battle here. Will we have a winner in our second to last battle? Here we go. So we do so. One Mekua, two Mekua, three in favor of Kojiro Mekua. We're moving on to the top 16. Ah, so. Good battle there, nice, uh, good even battle between these two guys, but uh, obviously we did have a winner out of those two. All right, we're, we are now halfway through the top 32. Had some good runs so far. Uh, a fairly wide range of runs. We've seen some uh, extremely close runs, some big mistakes. Nothing too major so far. I think uh, most of these guys have uh, gotten the hang of the course. Of course, this is uh, the first time for the majority of these guys driving this particular layout. It's not the first time it's been used for drifting, however. Uh, there have been some drift events held at this layout before, but uh, obviously not with, all the, uh, not with all the safety equipment that we have uh, set up here, all the barriers and so forth. So these guys can go and drive a little bit harder than they usually do if they've driven here before. But it is the first time we've had a competition of this size here at this particular venue. So if you do look up this venue on a map, it does say Okubuki Motor Park as well as Okubuki Ski uh, Ski Resort. Uh, these sorts of layouts have been used in motorsports in Japan for a long time for uh, Gymkhana events and uh, things like that. Okay, next run. By run, Andrew Gray with a new livery design for this weekend. Of course, Andy, number one in the points for this season. Car number 100 in the JZX100 Chaser. Now, Andy, for anyone out there who was uh, looking forward to seeing Andy drive in the uh, Irwindale round, uh, you might have noticed he wasn't there. Well, the reason for that, he said, was because uh, he was uh, looking to concentrate on this weekend, on this weekend's competition, uh, because he obviously in the chance to uh, take out the championship. So uh, deciding to give Irvindale a miss, which I've been told is probably the worst thing because uh, everybody says that Irvindale is their favorite event to, uh, to drive in. So uh, Andy not being there, probably, he'll probably be there next season. I'm pretty sure of that. So now next, uh, next battle we have uh, Iko Saito versus uh, Fukada. Now, Fukada, a bit of an interesting thing yesterday with him. Uh, he missed his first qualifying run because of a, uh, a twisted drive, uh, not sorry, not drive shaft, a uh, propeller shaft. Uh, I went and saw it. It was uh, twisted up like a Twizzler. It was very, it was like almost perfectly twisted into a nice little helix. Ooh. And uh, what he had to do was actually, uh, he didn't have a spare, so he found an S14, he found an S14 Sylvia uh, dry, uh, propeller shaft, cut the section, uh, center section out, borrowed uh, a welder and welded it back together and managed to make it out for his uh, second qualifying run. So uh, yeah, he borrowed he borrowed uh, Masuda's welder actually. Uh, Masuda here with uh, all his, <laughs> if you've seen the car, you can probably tell it needs a lot of this shark. It needs a lot of uh, repairing a lot, you know, all the time. Yeah, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes here that a lot of people don't necessarily get to get to see or get to hear. Well, just watching on the live stream, but there is a plethora of issues and problems that these drivers yeah. deal with and having to get their cars back and, and functional. And a lot of times it, it 
some of it manifests itself in situations like this where they may have been working on the car, may have not had the best opportunity to shake it down in practice, and, and then uh, the gremlins pop their heads up. But uh, these cars definitely take a beating, and we certainly have seen that in the U.S. series yeah. where towards the latter end of the year, and especially at Irwindale, uh, cars were just blowing up left and right. And uh, you have to wonder about uh, the longevity of these car builds and having to take those things into consideration, adding an extra round this year, how much uh, beatings are taken on these vehicles. And the same can be said for, you know, the FD Japan series. I and mean, these guys are trying to put together the most reliable cars that they can. But you never know who's going to hit you or what you're going to hit and what you're going to have to deal with. And, uh, and that is part of the story that gets told from after practice and qualifying ends and into the wee hours of the morning at almost <laughs> every single event. That's right. Well, I mean, if you compare the uh, Japanese series to the American series, obviously a lot of these guys are fairly low budget, uh, especially guys like Fukada. He's a privateer. He works on, he a, has a very small crew, uh, works on his car by himself most of the time. But uh, lucky for him, still managing to make it out this weekend. Okay, so here we go. Iku Saito leading. Fukada following. Both cars, X. X100 oh. chassis. Bit of a wobble there on the edge there for Saito. Bit of a hesitation. It's allowed Fukata to get right up against his door. Fukata, great following run here from Fukata. Getting hard on the power. Maintaining his uh, proximity to Saito. Well, a little bit of an understeer there from Fukata, but very consistent proximity there for Fukata. Great following run, I'd say. Slight uh, mistake at the end there, but uh, overall great run from the following, the blue car there, Fukata. Let's have a look at the replay. Let's take a look at this run one more time here. As you can see, Saito comes into initiation here. He's going to have a little bit of trouble coming out of the turn. You can see right there, just almost an understeer, but he almost straightens out a little bit. Gets back on it here, now shooting to out towards his second outer zone. And right there, Fukata on the inside, trying to close the door, take away some of that proximity. He's going to push hard down here on the inside. He's going to come up on a tight line, nearly take out that inside clip, but was able to avoid it there. So good back and forth battle here. Both drivers making a couple of minor mistakes. And now we'll see it one more time as they change positions. Fukata will now lead, and Saito will now chase. And that could have been a, a fairly nasty understeer there for Fukata. We see uh, the guys who do take that line. Of course, we are, we are asking them to take a narrow line there. There is an inner clip. But they're managing to pull it off. Okay, this time Fukada, the blue and silver car leading. Saito, red car following. Okay, good entry from both these guys so far. Fukada, a little bit shallow there, but uh, not, not a big mistake so far. Okay, this is tandem. This is a tandem battle we have here. Fukata pulling away slightly from Saito. So uh, a, a decent run from both these guys, but uh, Saito just sort of not keeping the kind of uh, proximity that Fukata had on him. Yeah, Fukata able to get away a little bit without running a tight line. You can see here he initiates. He stays pretty decent into that first outer zone, not all the way in there. Uh, Saito stays with him at the beginning here. Fukata again a little bit off the entry of that outer zone, but able to make it up here as he shoots to that final outer zone. Now down the hill here, and you can see that separation kind of happening as Saito is trying to close the door, but not able to get very close in proximity. Yeah, it seemed that uh, Fukata was able to sort of adjust his, on his uh, following run, he was able to adjust his speed to be able to catch up to Saito, but Saito sort of, sort of falls off about here and just sort of isn't able to catch back up again to the lead car, Fukata, for the rest of the course. Of course, Fukata did make a, a, a mistake on his uh, following run just about there, which Saito did not. But just, we're looking at the run overall and we're comparing all the runs. So we have a one more time from one of the judges. A two one more times. Let's see if we get one more. So yes, three. One more time from all three judges. Fukata versus Saito. So obviously Saito, his following run, uh, nothing too flashy about it, but just fairly consistent. Fukata's uh, following run. Uh, very aggressive and cool looking, but he did make a couple of mistakes, a few wobbles here and there. It wasn't the cleanest looking of runs. So obviously the judges are balancing that all out and giving them a one more time. So we have our first one more time between Saito and Fukata. But before we get to that, we're going to move on to our next battle now. Our next battle between uh, Masaki Kasahara and uh, Nagata. 
I believe uh, it's his very first time entering this uh, series. Nagata there, you see in the background. We have Kasahara at the start line, we have uh, Nagata there. Kasahara, very young guy. I'm not sure how young he's, he, I forget exactly how young he is, but uh, he's in his early 20s, that's for sure. Very skilled driver. Oh, you can see his face there. <laughs> All right, here we go. About to start this run. Kasahara will be leading. Tsukasa following. Oh, for people who always wonder how to pronounce that in Japanese, like, like where scuba circuit is pronounced like that, just say like su. Or like sku, like as in scuba diving. Like, su, su, like Tsukasa. It's kind of difficult, but yeah. Tsunami. Tsunami. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Tsunami. I overlooked the, the uh, dead obvious uh, uh, example there. It's not like Tsu. It's just su. Hey, Tsukasa. Tsu, tu, 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 I can't even say it the wrong way. <laughs> Getting him uh, on the start line there. So Kasahara's car, uh, S15 Silvia, uh, set up in a very sort of uh, extremely balanced way. The way you see it, uh, it rotates around its axis. Is, uh, it's sort of very sprite. It looks like it's on its toes all the time. He sort of, uh, his style is uh, keeping his momentum up all the way around rather than uh, using power and weight shifting compared to some of the other guys. He'll be leading this run. Okay, here we go. Kasahara versus Skasa. Kasahara, the red S14 leading. Nice angle at his entry there. Not quite as much angle from Skasa. To see if Skasa can manage to catch up with him. Okay, great lead run here so, so far from Kasahara. Uh, Skasa getting really hard on the accelerator. Creating a whole lot of smoke, but not a lot of traction there. Did you see that? He was, uh, right after the outer clip, he got really hard and accelerated to try and catch up, but uh, it just all turned into smoke and noise and no forward momentum. Let's watch this replay again. Well, Kasahara blasts out of the pocket here. You can see he initiates and he times it perfectly. Very good job on that first outer zone. Just a, just a few feet off, maybe even just a, f a foot off. Perfect job on the second outer zone. He was right up against the wall. And then right here, he's going to lose Sukasa down the hill and really give himself, in my mind, a pretty solid advantage going into run number two. That was a great, a really good lead run there from Kasahara. Of course, uh, the lead run, the briefing for the lead run is uh, just do your best qualifying run that you possibly can. But, uh, yeah, Sukasa, we could, it was really obvious there when he got on the power. Uh, Kasahara just uh, managed to pull away from him. Okay, red flag. We had a red flag on the start there. Maybe uh, Tsukasa not uh, not in the best of moods right now. See there, our flag marshals. Tsukasa returning to the start line. It's the lead, right, the lead up to the uh, first corner is a. Uh, I guess very short uh, compared to uh, what we normally see at uh, Formula Drift Japan. However, of course, uh, we do want to, that it's about as far back as you can go on this road and still give them a straight line. And of course, we don't want to give uh, too much of a, a long run up because uh, this uh, uphill, it's going to give a, an advantage or disadvantage to certain types of cars and uh, uh, like high power, low power cars. So keeping it as even as we can. Okay, here we go. Start again. Casa. Going into this run with a disadvantage. Kasahara falling back slightly, giving him a bit of distance. Maybe uh, relying on the fact that he's able to catch up, which he has already done. Okay, Kasahara right up against the door of Tsukasa. Tsukasa again. Really hard on the power, but uh, not moving forward very fast. So another really good, uh, another good run there for Kasahara. So the battle is in the books here. Let's take a look at this one more time. Now remember, Kasahara had a very, very impressive lead run. So we'd want Tsukasa to have something similar there. You can see both drivers coming up the hill. Good initiation there. Nice job on that first outer zone. You can see Kasahara takes a tight line there, maybe giving a little bit back there. But then Tsukasa is really off that second outer zone, especially at the beginning. 
and it gives an opportunity here for Kasahara to really maintain good proximity. He lacks the angle a little bit down the hill, so not a perfect run in the chase yeah. position by Kasahara. Uh, so he cost him some mistakes of his own, so now the judges will take a look at both runs together, who had the better of the two leads, who had the better of the two chases. Let's find out. So we have the results coming right now. Kasahara, one, two, three in favor of Kasahara in the red Sylvia. So, uh, yeah, not, the, not, the, not a perfect following run. There were a couple of mistakes, but uh, overall very good, showing uh, a lot of foresight and control, uh, driving uh, not in a reactive way, but in a proactive way. He seemed to know what the uh, lead car was going to do, managing to uh, drive very intelligently and getting the win there against Nagata. So Nagata knocked out in the top 32. Kasahara moving on to the top 16. Okay, next uh, battle we have now, Jin Harino in the 380SX GTR VR38 powered 180SX versus Sheng Nian from Singapore. One of the other two drivers with a big heavy crash yesterday in uh, practice, but... Whoa, big entry there from Sheng Nian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he almost got, he almost pulled that off. He almost pulled that off. If Peter pulled that off, that would have been the best run of the entire weekend. Unfortunately for him, just tagging the rear of Harino's car, knocking him right at the most vulnerable point, right at the end of the uh, entry. And uh, that is definitely a uh, forced spin there for Harino. He did knock him a bit hard. Let's watch this replay. Yeah, certainly applaud the aggressiveness here. You can see that he's trying to get the timing just right and he miscalculated just a little bit, ah. but it was it was one of those kind of things where if he was able to pull that off, it would have been a tremendous thing to see. He just maybe pushed a little bit too hard, <laughs> timing just a half beat off, but you gotta congratulate uh, Nian for pushing hard like that, and he'll have one more shot here, as now it'll be his opportunity to lead uh, against Harino. I mean, uh, sorry. Jin Harino, yeah, yeah Harino. Right. Uh, that, I mean, that could have been great. If he'd have, uh, if he'd have rotated, that, if he'd have got his rotation of on a bit earlier, the car might have slowed down fast enough for him to avoid contact there with Jin Hirina. But ah, uh, that was <laughs> that was great. That was great. If, if we, if everybody could just do like that and pull that off, please, that would make for some great uh, competition this weekend. <laughs> and Harino's there just, uh, 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 and thinking about it from Harino's point of view there, he's right at the end of the entry, he's right uh, close up against the wall, against the uh, the cone, and he just gets donked from behind and uh, spun around. So it would have been a bit of a surprise for him as well. Okay, here we go. This time, Sheng Nian leading in the grey JZX100. A little bit more uh, conservative this time for him, but still a great entry. As far as entries go, Jin Harino slowly, slowly rolling a spin there. And that, oh, again, that same spot. That same spot there, right at the end of the outer zone. A spin there for Sheng Yan. So, Harino completing his run cleanly. So, two major mistakes there for Sheng Yan. Let's watch this replay. Well, obviously, with the two at least on the face zeros, definitely on the second run here, because this was unimpeded out front, but it's going to be tough for the judges to have anything to go uh, in the case of Nien. And you can see here the spin out there just yeah. kind of putting a stamp on it. So Arena will move on into the top 16. Love Shang. He's a great guy and uh, definitely fun to watch him as he continues to progress and learn not only here, but uh, running the Pro 2 Series back in the U.S. And uh, I'm sure we'll see him next year as well. Uh, that was a bit of a shame there after that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so push him right. There we go. One, uh, two. So Andy N, Robbie Nishida, and, Ro and uh, Ryan Lantain are our three judges here this weekend. All to the right. Push him right in favor of Jin Harino. Moving on to the top 16. So, <laughs> uh, that was fun. That was fun to watch. But unfortunately for Sheng Nian, Harino moving on to the top 16. Okay, so next run here. Uh, another buy run. If you're wondering, why do we have so many buy runs? Well, we did have a few double zeros yesterday, unfortunately. Uh, the course catching out people. And, uh, of course, in uh, Formula Drift, double zero means no entry. Which is fair enough. If you can't pull off uh, two solo runs, you shouldn't really be put into a tandem competition. So next driver, Taguchi. 
car number 999, Up Garage S15, Sylvia. A little bit of uh, information about Taguchi. Uh, his car is sponsored by Up Garage, but uh, Up Garage actually also signs his checks. He's a, wor he works at an Up Garage. That's his regular job uh, day to day. He works at the Up Garage, uh, Up Garage GT at Machida which is actually a fairly popular spot for people uh, visiting Tokyo, uh, car guys who like to, who are visiting Tokyo, Japan, doing the car thing in Japan. Uh, it's a fairly good spot. There's also quite a few uh, other shops around there like uh, Tomei and uh, B Racing, so it's a good place to visit. If you are heading there and you want to find yourself uh, you know, an LSD for your, for your 240SX or a set of headlights for your Corky Sylvia, uh, that's where you're going to find them, and you'll probably find him in there working as well. So here he goes on his uh, solo run, his buy run. Of course, uh, treating it as a good uh, test, I suppose. His car's been running fairly well all weekend. He's been uh, looking like he's been enjoying this course as well. He's throwing it in nice and hard, in a clip, out a clip, and down over the finish. Yeah, one thing I recognize about Taguchi, he certainly has that downhill portion just nailed. Always carrying a lot of angle there. He seems to be he, he seems to be taking a wide line, but then he angles the car up and he's able to reach and touch that inside clip. So he'll have a berth into the top 16 and he will face the winner of the next battle, which is going to be Kenji Yamanaka and uh, Iha. No, actually, next battle is going to be Hiroshima and Matsukawa. Matsukawa, yeah. So these guys are just uh, heading back to the pits. We see there, uh, this is going to be our one more time between Iko Saito and Fukada. That's Fukada there warming up his tires. He was the one we were talking about just before with the uh, stop gap welded propeller shaft cut and shut job. I saw the, the welds on it were, uh, they definitely weren't done for beauty, they were done for strength, that's for sure. Don't know if the, uh, the balance of the drive, of the, uh, shot of the propeller shaft is uh, all that good anymore, but uh, it only has to survive today. So this is gonna be our one more time of this battle between Saito and Fukada. We see there's Saito, the red JZX100, Fukada following blue and silver JZX100. Here we go. Nice entry from both these guys. Good angle there from Saito. Lacking a bit of angle there following car Fukata. Saito flicking the car back out against the wall. Out of zone. Fukata. Oh, oh. big understeer. Understeer there from Fukata. Again, that same spot. We just saw the spin there. Keeping it as close as he can to Saito. Uh, quite a few uh, mistakes there for Fukata on that following run. Again, that same spot on the course, that mistake. Let's take a look at this again here. Saito out front, Fukata in the chase position. Both drivers accelerating up the hill. Saito initiates a little bit off that outer zone. You can see Fukata taking advantage on the inside here, trying to close the door. But watch as we transition out of the outer zone to right there. Fukata is going to have a pretty sizable mistake right in front of the judging stand here. Now down the hill is Saito pushing through to that last inside clip, which you just missed by a little bit. But probably the biggest thing would be that uh, mistake right at the end of Outer Zone 2 from Fukata. Yeah, it's, uh, it's right in front of the judging stand. It's extremely obvious. And uh, it, uh, that was probably going to give him a bit of a disadvantage there, unfortunately, for Fukata. Because Saito's run, uh, a good run overall. Not too, uh, ex not too amazing or flashy, but uh, still a solid, solid run for him. Okay, here we go. This time Fukata leading Fukata. Has to throw it all out there, shifting up through the gears. Nice early entry there, both these guys. Similar angle, both the cars so far. Looks fairly even this run so far. Fukata flicks it back. Okay, looking much better this time. Oh, and again, another mistake, a mistake there from the following car. Fukata keeping it clean, but Saito, again, a bit of a wobble and understeer there. A very similar run for both these guys. Similar mistake in a similar spot. Well, the question will be for the judges is, was that mistake by Saito bigger than the one that Fukata made, and were the rest of the runs comparatively similar? If that's the case, and you could see Fukata getting the win here, uh, could also potentially be, uh, you know, one more time. But let's take a look at this here. 
with Saito in the chase position. The, the mistake is going to happen right here. He's going to put a lot of angle into the car, then he's going to have to pull some out, and he nearly <laughs> straightens up. You can see he gets on the throttle to keep the car in drift, but yeah. nonetheless, it was a pretty sizable mistake. So both drivers making mistakes there. Now we have to weigh the rest of the, the runs outside of those mistakes to see if we can find ourselves a winner. Yeah, of course, the judges uh, well aware, seen more than enough drifting to see that uh, when a mistake is being covered up by power. Of course, you can... Uh, you can see here. So watch this. Watch the following car. Watch Iko on the red car. Kind of understeers there. Gets on the power. Wah, gets on the, the uh, save me right foot. And uh, completes the rest of the run very well. But uh, that was a mistake there. He did not understeer. Like he didn't lose his drift. But uh, if it wasn't for uh, the horsepower of that engine, he would definitely be... He would... Uh, have definitely lost his drift. So we're just waiting for a result for this battle we can see here. So this is basically the view from the judging stand, what we can see. So one for Fukada, two for Fukada, and a one, one more time, so just barely making it through. Tadahiro Fukada in the blue and silver JZX100 just getting in front of Iko Saito. So we can see the yeah, one more time uh, from uh, Ryan Lantain, uh, one of our judges. So just barely making through. So congratulations to him. A one more time battle. So very evenly matched battle between these two. Fukada taking out the win. Okay, so we're about to start our next battle now. Hiroshima versus Matsukawa. Hiroshima the leading the car on the left. The, uh, I think it's orange, uh, sort of a blood orange color. S15 Sylvia with black doors. And on the right we have uh, Matsukawa in the Toyota 8.6. Okay, we're about to start this battle now. <laughs> Okay, here we go, this battle. Hiroshima versus Matsukawa. This time Hiroshima leading orange S15. Matsukawa, the white and black Toyota 8.6. Okay, good lead run so far here from Hiroshima. But Matsukawa tucking in behind him on the upper part of the course, out of zone. Let's watch how they throw it down the hill here. A fairly conservative run for both these guys so far. Nothing too super aggressive from either one of them. Let's take a look at this replay here. Hiroshima starts off pretty solid. Like you said, nothing super dynamic, but he does check a lot of the boxes here. You can see he's going to come into initiation, kind of a slow roll into it. Decent job there, a little bit short on, the, on filling the zone, but he's going to do a much better job on outer zone too. Nice and tight here. You can see Matsukawa trying to follow the line as best he can. Hiroshima reaching into that third outer zone. And down the hill here, he's going he's to be just a little bit long on that last inside clip. Matsukawa, on the other hand, not really pressing the action. He kind of stayed on the line as best he could. Uh, so now he'll have an opportunity to lay down a better lead run if he can than Hiroshima. And Hiroshima is going to try to press the action here to make it a decisive victory for him. Yeah, that's what he really needs to do. I think uh, Matsukawa is following around there. Just sort of, uh, if he was about a, uh, at least half a car length or a car length further forward than he was, it would be uh, a much better result for him, I get the feeling. But uh, just sort of not quite as, uh, like you said, dynamic a run. But uh, he still, he has a chance here. So this is actually a good chance for Hiroshima. If he can uh, get right up against Matsukawa for most of the course, it's going to give him a much better advantage. Actually, we have, what's going on here? We have uh, Matsukawa rolling back. Rolling back down into the uh, staging area. We do have Hiroshima on the starting line. So, Alexi, I am hearing over the radio here that it sounds like Matsukawa's um, vehicle, Matsukawa's vehicle, is having some technical problems, and, it, okay. and there's a more than a 75%, I'm going to go with that number, probability that he's going to be out of competition. Oh, dear. Okay. Technical issues. It's... Uh, Technical issues can be anywhere from... Uh, diff broke, that's what I'm hearing. Oh, diff broke, Ugh, okay. Broken diff, ah, okay, so uh, that sort of explains why he shut it down very early. 
uh, just right uh, right next to the uh, second initiation uh, marker cone. I saw him, he shut it down very early. Either, maybe that wasn't him shutting down. Maybe that was the uh, the drive shafts. Same. Sorry, the bye uh, bye. That was the uh, yeah. That was the uh, the engine spinning up, but the wheels are uh, not spinning up. Ah, so diff. That is not something that can be changed that easily. So, see, so he's on the uh, see our staff down there. He gets uh, Michael, one of our staff. We see that uh, Matsukawa getting out of the car. Right, he's taking off his gloves, which uh, in motorsport, you know, when you say, I'm pulling off the gloves, uh, that's not a good thing in motorsport. <laughs> that usually, it's usually a bad thing. He's got his helmet off too. So, yep, all right. So I, I believe that is going to be a retirement there for Matsukawa, which is unfortunate. We're looking forward to seeing uh, what Hiroshima could do in his following run. So that's going to be a solo run there for Hiroshima. Of course, Hiroshima also under the rules. He does have to complete this run to show that his car is working as well. So keeping an eye, just a little conservative run. Yep, my car's working, no problem. It's uh, drifting. It's not like poker where you can just uh, you can uh, win and then you know hand in your cards. You have to flip over your cards on every hand. Drifting and poker, interesting. Are there any parallels there between drifting and poker? Uh, it's done by. You can't can't well, really bluff your or can you? Can you bluff your opponent? Well, uh, no, you can't. I don't know. Can you? Well, uh, let let's not go there with the whole like uh, you know, bluff. Well, bluffing I guess is like. You know you what can it is? Trick them, though. You, you can you, trick them. You can you can trick them. You can you can fake them out. You can do things like that. But for, but for everybody, especially for everybody watching, it's like it's like when you watch it on TV. You know where you can see the cards and you you can tell. Like you can see, ah, oh, he's faking him out. He's fake. He's doing. So you, that's sort of what it is. Or you can like maybe there's like some shenanigans like on the hot grid where the team is saying, ah, oh, the car's down on power. You know, uh, you know, you know that kind of thing. But the car's really perfect. You know what? You know what? I'd like to. I would like to see more of that. I don't know. Like people get really upset when. I don't know what it is about drifting. Everyone has a really. Uh, they get upset very easily about the. I would love to see more sort of. I mean, I know it's sort of a cliche thing. Like sort of Conor McGregor. Uh, uh, banter, you know what I mean? Like I saw on, on Instagram a little while ago, uh, Vaughn Gittin Jr. put up some sort of, you know, thing about Osbel. Well, yeah, yeah, that. But more of that. I want to see more of that. Uh, you know, I mean, we we have a we have a show that we produce on on, on CBS back home. Oh, it's Formula Drift in, Insider. Insider, yes. And and this year, we made a little bit of extra effort to kind of show some of the but more behind the scenes stuff. Right. And for years, drivers had been a lot more. Um, reserved about the things that they maybe actually really felt <laughs> about actions that happened on course but this year I felt like we saw a lot more people let loose maybe because it's it's more important to them in terms of winning there's a lot more as we take a look at Kenji Yamada here in his, his uh, by run but it, I don't I have a few clips that I could show you that you would just love right because they're in that Conor McGregor vein uh, I would love it I, I think it's great and look a lo I mean a lot of a lot of drivers, I mean, they're friends as well, so it's not malicious, it's just, it, it, it's fun, and it makes it interesting, it adds an extra sort of thing to it, and it gives the drivers an outlet too, like, uh, I mean, uh, there have been quite a few times where I've seen people, stuff like drivers, posting stuff on Facebook that's extremely passive-aggressive, and kind yeah. of like, uh, and it's like, come on, come on, come on, guy. Have fun with it. You have a chance to have some fun with something well, here. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's not, a, but it's, and it's not a, in the same sense of like what McGregor is doing where he's, he's playing a pseudo character. Yeah. You know, well. he, he's sell he's trying to sell a show yeah. and people want to see what he's going to do. He realize. I mean, it's the same thing like with Mayweather. They understand that. And in some sense, drivers can also do that. Um, but because everybody knows that people are trying to sell a fight, there's a there's kind of like a psychological distinction that people understand. Right. I think in drifting, if you come off as an a-hole type thing <laughs> to try to to try to promote yourself, people more attach themselves to you that to that label to you. You know, so maybe that's right. why they're being a little bit more careful. But uh. I do love though when people 
express their raw emotion about something in real time. And that's some of the stuff that we saw in Insider this year where it was just like, uh, I, see. I thought you drove poorly, you know, you were left foot braking, you know, you're not supposed to slow down right there. <laughs> and then the other guy retorts and has his comeback. So I, I, I think it's really cool. Well, uh, I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see more of that sort of thing. Okay, speaking of more of this sort of thing, let's watch more of this sort of thing, drifting. Kenji Yamanaka versus Iha. So Yamanaka, lead car, Tomei, Jason for 100. Great entry there from him. Iha in the Aristo. Two big cars throwing it around on this tight course here at Okuibuki. Great proximity there from Iha, tucking up against Yamanaka. Yamanaka, whoa, big 3.6 litre 2JZ Tomei engine laying the smoke down. Iha falling behind slightly, getting really late on the power there. Huge cloud of smoke going up here. Let's watch this replay and these two guys go to battle here. Well, this is our last battle of the top 32. Yamanaka in the lead position. You can see right there a little bit of slowdown. Iha almost makes contact with Yamanaka and then gets really off timed here. He's going to be a, on a very inside line. Yamanaka, good angle through inside clip number one. Nice job on outer zone number two. Iha, much tighter line here through outer zone number two. A little bit of straightening there by Iha as they leave outer zone number three. Yamanaka back down the hill. Pretty good job on that last inside clip. So interesting start as both drivers get very, very close to each other up the hill. Now they'll switch positions. Iha out front, Yamanaka in the chase. Yeah, two, very, uh, two of the biggest cars we have here. There's a big, huge wide body on Yamanaka's car. Very impressive looking car. Uh, Iha's Aristo. The only Aristo out here this weekend. So here we go. This time Iha in the red Aristo will be leading Kenji Yamanaka. Okay, we have a red flag for the start. We're going to have to do a restart there. I can see that uh, the, I can see Kevin, our uh, technical director down there, readjusting one of the cones on the start line. So obviously it was, a, as they say in Japanese, a pylon tachi, or a pylon touch. They call them uh, pylons here. Uh, cones. In Australia, we call them witches' hats. Witches' hats. Oh, I yeah. like that. That's yeah. the best one, I think. <laughs> It, uh, our, when you were living in Australia, was uh, the um, World Time Attack Challenge going on? Yes. Was yeah, I was like, when, I think I went to like this, the first one. Did you watch any of the, of, um Well, obviously, I, night? well, uh, n uh, I watched a bit on uh, Facebook. Uh, we, like we said, we had the uh, World Time Attack event there yesterday. Great event. We had, uh, you know, uh, Chris Forsberg, a battle between Chris Forsberg and Daigo Saito. Uh, Chris in a... Almost a replica of his car, V8 350Z, yeah. uh, built by MCA. Uh, it blew up though, didn't it? It did, yeah. And also uh, Daigo Saito in his uh, Lamborghini. So some great demo drifting last night. But uh, speaking of demos, this is not a demo. This is a battle we have here. Iha leading. Yamanaka following Yamanaka. Very close on the entry there. A little bit of slow entry there for Iha, giving uh, Yamanaka a chance to catch up with him. Watch him as they flick it back around the outer zone. Yamanaka has a chance here to catch up with Iha. Not a bad run from both these guys. Uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit damp on that run compared to the uh, to the first run. But let's uh, let's watch this replay again and see. Uh, watch this start here. I think. Yeah, slow progress up the hill here. We saw that on run number one. Almost some contact. You can see a little bit slow by Ihia until he gets into initiation. He's going to be a bit off that first outer zone. Now Yamanaka looking for an opportunity to attack here as Ihia kind of gets a little bit shallow on the entry of that outer zone, but much better job on the exit, out leaving outer zone three, wrapping it around this last turn here and going down the hill. So both runs in the book now, and we go quickly to the judges scorecard. Okay, so we're gonna get a result here. So one for Kenji Yamanaka. Yeah, I think the uh, first run there is gonna be the, uh, the stronger of the two runs there for Kenji, giving him the win. So Kenji Yamanaka in the uh, Tomei JZX100 Mark II will be moving on to the top 16. Okay, so that is the end of our top 32 battles here at Okuibuki Motor Park. And a huge bug just landed on the table. That's us up here. Hello. That's us here in the judging stand. We're over on the uh, far left of screen. We've got a great view. We have this uh, very cool sort of uh, rock formation below us. It makes us look like a sort of a, a castle up on a hill. Uh, we have a great view of this of our entire domain here at Okuibuki, this uh, drift course. We can see the pits, the course. We can see the, the uh, vendors area. Uh, over, of course, we have a motorcycle stunt show there as well. Also up the hill here today, we have the, the Offset Kings Japan show. Uh, lots of uh, 
slammed. What is it called? The uh, the vape and scrape. <laughs> oh, vape and scrape. Crew? Va well, the vape and scrape. Vape. It, it hasn't really uh, caught on here yet. It's just the it's just the scrape crew. Lucky for them, uh, the the uh, entry. Even though this is a, a fairly countryside sort of area, the uh, access road here is uh, is quite good compared to a lot of other venues like this. So even the lowest of the low would have had no trouble getting in here. I'm definitely going to go up there and have a look uh, at that show during lunch. So this has been the top.